All right, 7.3 repeating decimals. Uh, we started this section last time, and we had taken a look at taking fractions and seeing places and times when they turn into numbers that are repeating. Um, we'd established that we get repeating decimals when we have denominators that don't just have twos and fives in them. And we had done an example of seeing when the number starts repeating and marking it as such. We did one that had the number repeating immediately, and we did one that had the number repeating after a couple of times. And I mentioned in passing that it could be a long time before a number repeats. The number one seventh doesn't repeat until you get six digits long. It's very long before it repeats, so that can happen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually take repeating numbers, right, these repeating decimal type numbers, and go the other direction. So we took fractions and made them repeating decimals. Now we're going to take repeating decimals and go back and make them fractions. Um, and I will tell you that this is one of these topics where the way that we're going to do it is not going to look quite like the way that I do it in, say, my Calculus 3 class, which should make sense, obviously. Um, but my point being is that there is more than one way to think about this and to sort of process through with this. Um, but the way that we're going to do it is from a standpoint of something that you could do in a middle school setting. There's nothing that we're doing that's outside of that kind of a context, okay? Um, there might be, in your mind, a shortcut to doing this. There are shortcuts that work in certain situations, but they don't work in all situations. So the way that I'm going to show you this does work in all situations. Fair? Okay. So the first number that we have is 61, right, hundredths that repeats. So if you think about what this number is, it's the number, Sean, like that, right? Six one six one six one. That's the number we're talking about. So the setup that we're going to do in order to look at this is we're going to call that n. And if you'd like to write it with the repeating bar, you may. I actually think it's a little bit more helpful to write out a few of the symbols and to remember the, the numerals and to remember that it keeps going and actually write it. Okay, but it's your choice. What you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself this question: How many numbers repeat? And your answer here is. Two. Two numbers repeat. What are they? Six, Six and one. one. So the two numbers repeat, right? Okay, they do it infinitely. That's what you were getting into, Kate Brianna. They keep doing it. But there's only two numbers that repeat themselves, right? Two numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by a one followed by that many zeros. So in this case, it is a one followed by the two zeros or the number 100. Why? Because two digits repeat. So I need two zeros for this to work. If three digits repeated, what number would I be multiplying by? A thousand. If one number repeats, what am I multiplying by? Ten. Okay, you guys got it. Okay, so that's how we decide what we multiply by. That right there is the trickiest part, and I know that sort of sounds silly, but people will multiply by the wrong number all the time, and then they get stuck. Okay, so if you get stuck, you probably multiply by the wrong number. All right, so what happens? Well, on the left-hand side, this is just 100 n. Okay, that's fine. But what happens on the right-hand side when I have 0 0.61, 61, 61, 61, and on, and I multiply by 10? I get 61, uh-huh, and then 61, 61, 61, forevermore. Okay, everybody okay so far? Okay. What we do next is that we subtract the original number we started with. What was the original number we started with? 0. 0.61 repeating. And what was the variable name that we gave that? N. So on the right-hand side, we subtract the number form of it. And on the left-hand side, we subtract its counterpart, that is, its name in variable form, or n. Okay, this is an equation, right? Equations have to balance. So whatever you do on the left, you have to do on the right. I can do this, though, because n equals 0.61 repeating. So it is perfectly reasonable and correct to subtract its version over here that's helpful, n, and its version over here that's helpful, 0.61 repeating, and it still stays balanced. Okay? But notice what happens on the right-hand side. We'll come back to the left-hand side in a second. What happens on the right-hand side when I subtract these? Cancels out the decimals. Yeah, all the decimals cancel out. Now, 
As we work through these, you will see that it's not always the case that all the decimals cancel out, but it is the case that the repeating from some point on will. Okay, so there's going to be a repeating pattern that's going to line up if we've multiplied by the right number, and they sort of will wipe one another out. What am I going to be left with on this problem on the right-hand side? Mm -hmm. 61, right? Final 61. Now, on the left-hand side, what's 100n minus n? So it's 100n minus n. Say it louder, Kelly. Thank you. 99n, right? Ooh, that's algebra one, like ninth grade stuff, right? You subtract the numbers in front, 100 minus 1, it's 99n. Now, my goal is to have it say n equals on the left-hand side again, right? Because I want to have an expression still that's the number n, right? It's supposed to be the same as I started with, n on the left. So what would I need to do to get n on the left by itself? I divide by 99. Now, if 61 divided by 99 would reduce, we would do so. Right? So if they both like divided by 3 or something, then that'd be great. These don't. This is the, de the fraction representation of the decimal expansion 0.61 repeating. And it's really easy to check and see that it works. Grab your calculator and put into your calculator 61 over 99. And you should be able to see a decimal expansion, if you're correct, that matches the decimal expansion we started with. Do you? Yeah, you do. This is correct. OK? Yeah, Jamar? Do you always have to go through that whole equation, or will it always be like over 99 or over 999? That is a very good question, and we're going to show you one that shows you that, yes, you have to, because it doesn't always end up over the 999 or 99 or 9. Yeah. So there are different caveats that will do that. And our next example actually shows it really well. So all right. What's repeating on this one? Just the one, right? OK. So we start the same way, n equals 0.61, and the one repeats. So I'm going to write out several repeating ones. Okay. Again, you can write the one with bar on top of it. I think it looks a little bit simpler when we start to do the subtraction to actually see a few of these written out. So I'm going to write mine out. How many numbers repeat? One. Just one. So what number are we going to multiply by on both sides? Ten. Just 10. I only need one zero because only one number repeats. Now on the left, that's fine. This is 10n. What happens on the right with the 6 point or the 0.61 repeating? We get 6.1 and the ones repeat, but now all the repeating happens to be after the decimal. Again, that doesn't have to happen, but it did here. Is that okay? All right. The next step is we're trying to wipe out the one repeatings. We do that by subtracting the original number. Now the original number was not 0.1 repeating. Okay, this is a mistake that people will sometimes say, well, I just want to get rid of the 0.1s, right? So I'm just going to put some 0.1s down there. But that wasn't our original number. What was our original number? 0.6 with the ones repeating, right? So we're going to line them up. So the one repeatings are going to cancel, at least most of them, right? But the 6 right there lines up, and I'm going to have to deal with him on his own terms. On the left-hand side, what will I subtract? N, just like always, we will always subtract N. N is equal to the 6, 1 repeating on the right. So 10N minus N would be 9N. Good. We got that one down. Y'all y'all are quick studies. Okay. How about the numbers that repeat? Do you see a lot of them canceling out? Yeah? So these, these ones right here, after the first place, right, the tens pla tenths place remains. There's still going to be a 1 in the tenths place on top. There's still going to be a 6 in the tenths place on bottom. But all the ones after that line up and repeat and can cancel out, right? Okay. So now I really do have the number 6.1 minus 0.6. That's what I have left to do. So then, what is 6.1 minus 0.6? It is 5.5. Thank you, Chesney. Yeah, 5.5. 
Okay, what do I do to find n? Divide by nine. I divide by 9. Now, 5.5 divided by 9 is not where we're going to leave this. Um, we're not going to mix notations where we have decimals and fractions in the same problem. The directions, in fact, tell me that it wants it to have an integer on the top and bottom. I already have an integer on the bottom, but if I don't have an integer on the top, I, I, I can't stop there. Okay? So how do we get rid of the fact that there's a decimal on the top? Well, we saw this happen in the last section of material in a, in a slightly different context. But we need to multiply by something that moves a decimal. About 10. That's right. So if I multiply by 10 on the top, of course I have to do it on the bottom, what will the 5.5 become? 55. 55. And what will the 9 become? 90. 90. And Jamora, that's the one I wanted to show you, right? I don't just have 9 on the bottom and I don't have 99. I end up with 90 because of the way the decimals repeated in a sort of a funny fashion, right? Not all of them repeated, in other words. Now, this is an integer over integer form. That's really good, but it's still not my answer. I can simplify. What's wrong with, what would I do to simplify this one, Avery? We can divide it by five. We need to divide by something that's in common to both. Five is definitely an option that will work. So if I divide by five, what is 55 divided by five? 11, 11. and what's 90 divided by five? 18. Um, 11's prime, and it doesn't divide into 18, so at this point, this is our fraction. It's 11 over 18. Please check in your calculator. Don't take my word for it. Let's let the calculator confirm back to us that this works. Does 11 over 18 equal 0. 0.6 and then the one repeating? Yeah, it does. Okay, so the next piece of information is very interesting. Are you ready? We're going to do 0.9 repeating. Setup's the same, okay? So we're going to write down n equals 0.9, and we're going to write a bunch of nines, right, out like this. How many numbers repeat? One. One. So what will I be multiplying by? Yeah. 10. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. On the left, I get 10n. What do I get on the right? 9.9, .9, and the nines repeat a bunch of times. All doing good so far. What is my next step? Subtract it. So I'm going to subtract n on the left. It's always n on the left. And what do I have subtracting on the right? 0.99999 repeating, right? Okay, so on the left, I get 9n. What happens on the right? I get 9. And then what do I do? Divide by 9. What does n equal? 1. We just showed, through absolutely no trickery whatsoever, that 0.9 repeating is the number 1. They're exactly the same. It's just the repeating decimal form of that number. Does that feel a little unsettling? It usually does when I say it to students. They're like, excuse me, what? 0.9 repeating is exactly the same as the number 1. It's just its repeating decimal form. Now, here's the kicker. You can do this with any number. 1 is not special. So somebody give me, for the sake of argument, just give me another whole number for the moment. 5. 5, thank you. How could I write 5 in a repeating decimal form? Any ideas? Like four Close. It's going to have a 4. Uh, nope. 4.9 4. 9 repeating. What if I do a, a decimal already? What, what if I have the decimal 0.7? That's a terminating decimal. How could I write it in a repeating decimal form? 0.69 with the 9 repeating. You can do this with any number. There's nothing special about the number 1 that did this. It works with any number. And a part of the reason I wanted to mention this is because 
Believe it or not, your calculator doesn't actually know math. Did you know that? Some programmer needs some math, and they programmed the calculator to do some things, and sometimes the calculator gives errors. Um, I was teaching a different class the other day, and the answer was supposed to be a whole number that it showed up, and it showed up as a number that looked very much like 0.69 repeating. The answer in the calculator from the techniques that it was doing and the way that it was doing it was not doing conceptual math. It was doing a numerical process where at some point along the way it has a rounding error in the calculator. And everybody's calculator did it. It wasn't just like one person's. It was everybody's that did that, right? But they all needed at that point to look at this and say, yes, I see that it says 0.69 repeating and I recognize that's really the number 0.7, right? We need to be smarter than the technology that we're using or we're all in a world of hurt, right? We need to be able to interpret what information is giving us back. All right, so let's take a look then at this idea of finding numbers in between these repeating decimal forms um, and potentially other numbers. So on this one, it wants us to find any decimal, any decimal, so we have lots of flexibility, any decimal between 0.9 repeating and 1.1. Okay, well, we actually learned just a moment ago that what is 0.9 repeating? It's 1. Uh, and even if you didn't uh, know that, you could still have just written out a whole bunch of point nines, right? Everybody good with that? So this is one of our values is one. The other value I have is 1.1. Now it kind of looks like there's nothing space-wise in between them, but we've talked about denseness of rational numbers, right? You can always add zeros onto the end of things. So I don't have to think of one as just the number one. It can be 1.0. Um, it can also be 1.00. And just like the 1.1 can be 1.10. And you can add zeros on until there's sort of space that you can see between them. This one is the number 00, zero and this is now the number 10. It's acting very much like the number 0 and 10, right? So what is the number, what is a number between 0 and 10 that I could use? Okay, we could do the number 1, right? 0 0.01 would be equivalent to the number 1 if we're thinking about it that way. 1.01 .01 would be between the number 0.9 repeating and the number 1.1 .1 repeating, or 1.1, .1, excuse me. Are there others? 1.07. 1.07. How about 1.0002? Yeah, there's infinitely many that I could write down, but it just asks me for one, so we'll call it good. Now, if you're wanting to find the decimal halfway between, that's a trickier question. Now, with this one, it's not so bad because I know, again, that 0.9 repeating is 1. So let me show you what we'll do with that. That's fine. And then I'll show you what you do if you have a decimal that repeats that's not this really nice 0.9 form that turns into another, you know, like confined smaller number like this. We'll saw, see what happens. So if I want to find a number halfway between something, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the two numbers together and divide by 2. It's a midpoint formula, um, or it's an averaging process. You guys do it with your grades all the time, right? Like right now, because nobody has, well, not nobody, but most of you don't have a, a test grade in there yet. If you added all your homeworks together and divided by the total number of homework scores, we've had four, five, we've had five. That would be the average of your homework scores, right? Yeah. So if I add these two numbers together and I divide by 2, this will give me the halfway point. What is the halfway point between 1 and 1.1? 1 .1? 1.05. So what do we do if we have some sort of funny decimal that repeats? Like it's not 0.9, it's, let's just say it's 0.6, right? And something that's sim like close to it, and let's say it's 0.65. Okay, they're close numbers. Otherwise, it kind of doesn't make sense. We can probably figure it out maybe even by just looking at it. Um, but these numbers, they're close but they're not repeating in such a way that turning the 0.6 into something is a whole number or, or a decimal that's different than 0.6 is possible directly. Um, we'd have to go through that whole process we've done the last three problems. Probably don't want to do that. What do we do? Well, just write a whole bunch of them out. Add them together and divide by two. Grab your calculator to see what this one is. I totally made it up on the spot. I think it'll work out okay, though. What happens if you add up a whole bunch of sixes that repeat and the number 0.65, that should say 0.65, sorry. And then divide by two. It's 0.6 something, I'm sure. Ah, so at some point your calculator is gonna write down 333, right? 
and you're going to recognize that's my three repeating and you're going to put the bar on top of it. Does that make sense? It's just like what we did. You just have to write down a bunch of the numbers that are in progression that repeat to do it. Okay. We have one more example, and it's an example that I've alluded to uh, both this class period and last class period about the number one-seventh, division by seven. Some addition problems are easier to compute with fractions, and some are easier to compute with decimals. Okay? It is a true fact whether you like decimals or whether you like fractions or not. Some work better in one than they do in the other. For example, one-seventh plus five-sevenths is easier to compute than its decimal form. The decimal form for one-seventh one seventh is one four two eight five seven repeating. And for five sevenths, it's seven one four two eight five repeating. Would you agree that it's easier to add the fractions there than the decimals? Yeah, a lot easier. But if you looked at the decimals, 0 .4, uh, 0.4 and 0.25, that is easier to compute in decimal form than to compute two fifths, which is 0.4 and 1 fourth, which is 0.25. Your question says to describe situations where you think it would be easier to work with fractions than decimals and vice versa. When is it easier to use what? So what are some things that come to your mind when you look at those examples that make one easier than the other one? What was that? Okay, so if it has, it's not just change, but the fact that the change does what? Okay, we're going to come back to that. I'm going to clarify what you mean, because I know what you're saying, but we've got a little bit we need to describe further. What is over here said? I said money. Money, okay. So that we're still on the same lines. Okay. So what is it about these fractions, the ones we're given first, the one-seventh and the five-sevenths, that makes it easier to work with than its decimal form? They have the same denominator. Hmm? They have the same denominator. What else? It's definitely there's the same denominator. That makes it helpful, right? So like the one-seventh and five-sevenths is easier to do than the two-fifths and one-fourth because the denominators matched versus didn't match. That's definitely a viable thing we're going to write down. So we like fractions when the denominators match. Um, so... Jordan and Taryn both mentioned that they like decimals when they're able to think about them in terms of money. So let's flesh that out a little bit more. Why are we able to think about this decimal, 0.4 and 0.25 in terms of money, but the other two we weren't? There's a couple of reasons. Okay. Right, but that's not my question. My question is, why is this one not easy to work with as money? Okay, it's not terminating, so the repeating versus terminatingness of it is a feature there, right? So decimals are easier to work with when it's money or things that terminate, right, as opposed to repeat. Adding repeating decimals together is very tricky, especially when things don't line up. If you wanted to add 0.3 repeating and 0.1 repeating, you'd be fine. But if you wanted to add these two sets of numbers together that are repeating, you're not going to be so fine. That's a much more complicated question. The other thing that makes money happen is not just that they're terminating, but what? What if I had those same decimals for the 1 7th and the 5 7th, but they didn't have the repeating bars on the top? Would it still be easy to add them together? Would it still look like money? No. What about it would not look like money allocate? Yeah, the money that you guys are talking about has this sort of a beckoning to us because there's two decimal places, right? Some decimals don't have two decimal places. So when we have more than two decimal places, that also might be a place where we're like, okay, this doesn't look like money anymore, right? So money, because it terminates and it has, you know, one or two decimals is what makes it look like money. We even had that example where it had two and it had one as well, both of those pieces. So denominators matching makes fractions helpful, right? Terminating decimals makes decimals helpful. Few decimals in the number also makes it helpful, right? It doesn't necessarily need to be one or two, but when you get to six, it makes it more complicated, right? Yeah. 
So these are some of the features that we are sort of looking at and thinking, when is it easier to do one versus the other?